Today we're going to show you how to use your iPad as a controller uh, going through a Mio XM or XL and then going over to your Play Audio 12. So this is kind of a specific use case but one that comes up pretty common and I think a lot of people could definitely benefit from this. Um, this is a really cool way to control your live set uh, from an iPad that's possibly on stage or in, a, in your front of house area, uh, anywhere else that's not directly next to it. Um, so this is a great way to do it and it's a cool way to have a customizable kind of interface through your iPad. Uh, today I'm going to use a lemur on my iPad as the control surface that I'm going to create and uh, I will show you that right now. So what we'll do is we're gonna switch over to our iPad here. I'm gonna open up Lemur and we're gonna create a quick little template on here. We're gonna show you how to set that up inside of Oracle X on, uh, I'm using a Windows computer, Windows 10 computer right now. Um, I'm on an iPad Pro, I'm going USB-C here uh, into a, a powered USB-C hub and then I'm connecting a USB-A port from that into the USB B DAW port on the front of my Mio XM. Um, I'll add some diagrams and whatnot on the screen for you here and show you how to actually make that happen. All right, so inside a lemur, I have it open already. Let's create a new project. This is just, I'm gonna call this new project A, B, C, wow. So inventive. No, oh, I don't want that. All right, so here's my new project. Uh, great new project ABC. And we'll do obviously the first page. We'll just do it right from here. So the edit project, you can see the little switches on right here. So we can actually go into it and edit more options. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, um, let's just add, let's just do an add uh, play button and a stop button, and then we're gonna map it in the end inside of Ableton. So let's hit a plus button up here in the top left corner, and I'm gonna add a button. And I'm just gonna make giant buttons uh, so that you can very easily see them. Um, so I've created this one giant button and I'm going to press and hold and it gives me the options on what I want those to do. Um, so basically what we want to, them to do is, oops, I'm just going to add, so it has an option to add uh, off display text and I'm just going to put a little play button in there and my on display text is going to be the same. My off color is going to be that darker color. and my on color, I'm gonna make it as bright as I can so that when I click it, it works. Uh, some people like to put it on switch. I'm gonna throw it on pad. Uh, but the most important part of this custom button page is the output right here where it says X. So we're gonna click on that. Uh, we wanna click on destination, which we're gonna set up. We're gonna set up destination MIDI zero. I'll show you what that corresponds to in settings in a minute. Uh, it's going to be a note on, uh, actually, let's make it a uh, control change. And let's make it, what controller number should we make it? Let's make it 121. Pretty high control change number. And we're just going to do it on channel one. And that's all we need to do from there. And I think that's all we need to edit. So this is set up so that this play button actually sends controller or CC 121 on channel one. And it's gonna send it to destination zero, which I'll show you in the settings. First, we're going to, oops. Uh, I wanna copy this. Press and hold and I am going to paste. So second one, except for I'm gonna press and hold, I'm gonna change the icon on it and change go so this is gonna be my stop button and then we're gonna change the output obviously we don't want the exact same output number so I'm going to go and make it 122 same destination same channel 
and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this gear in the top right corner here and we're going to go to I think it's more settings yeah more settings and then you see down in this kind of bottom middle section there's a MIDI targets so MIDI target zero you can add more targets but MIDI target zero we're going to click here and we should see all the ports from the Mio XM that we've connected uh, to so we should see all 16 ports what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one called RSV1. It stands for Reserve 1, uh, and the Reserve 1 just has no MIDI routing to it currently. We're going to deal with that after, but I'm going to select Reserve 1. Basically, it's any port that's that's unused or something that you don't need to use. Um, that's what you want to select from here to get this connection made. And the two, uh, so that was the from, so this is coming from the XM app out to the iPad. And then the two option, which is the more important part, is going from the iPad back to the XM. And we're going to select the exact same port. That way we have two-way communication between the two. That's all we really need to do. We can hit the play button right here. And that kind of puts it in what's called like a, like a play mode. There we go. Sorry, I missed it like 12 times. Uh, so this will actually send the commands now. When I touch it, you can see they light up. Um, and then I'll send the commands over. So now let's switch over to the computer and show you what we need to do on that side. So now that we're done the lemur side, let's jump over to the computer. Um, so I have my Play Audio 12 connected, uh, USB port 1 into this computer. I also have both my Play Audio 12 and my Mio XM connected to an Ethernet switch. And I have the Ethernet switch connected to this computer. And this is mostly so that the XM can show up inside of Oracle X if you have a direct connection via Ethernet to the computer. Um, this is not necessary. You can connect uh, the Play Audio 12 directly to the Mio XM, but this is the way I like to do it just because it makes it easier if I need to make any edits on the fly for the XM to show up uh, consistently. In Oracle X, it needs a direct connection. So Ethernet is the way I would want it to go. So. We have, you can see XM007 over here, and that's on RTP. So we have both of these devices are, right now they're actually, so we have both of these devices now set up as uh, default settings. So we're gonna have to make some modifications. So the first thing we wanna do is we need to create a connection. Uh, let's actually follow the connection. So we're going from the iPad into the Mio XM. Now, if we go to MIDI routing, uh, you'll remember that we sent to this port called RSV1. So if we go into MIDI routing here and we go down to the device port to computer slash DAW, because that's the physical port that the iPad is connected to, we're gonna see a port called RSV1, which is the one that our buttons are going to from Lemur. So what we need to do is we need to send this RSV1 port to one of our RTP ports. And the reason we need to send this is because that's how we're getting from the iPad through the XM to the Play Audio 12. So let's select one of these. I'm gonna select RTP 12. It's just the last port, it's less likely to be used. Um, so let's send it to that. And then I would wanna go down to RTP 12 if I want to send back any data and make sure that sends back to the RSV1 port. So let's deselect host 8 and under the USB DAW on this side, we're going to select RSV1. So hopefully that makes sense. That's the uh, routing from the iPad going out and going to the uh, RTP to the Ethernet and then the Ethernet coming back to the USB DAW port on RSV1. So that's all we need to do for MIDI routing on the Mio XM. Now we're gonna to need to make a connection between the Mio XM and the Play Audio 12. So to do this, I'm gonna to go to RTP slash network. I'm gonna go right down to the last one. Remember we connected uh, RSV to RTP 12 port. So we're gonna take this information right here. This is called a bonjour name. Uh, so if we copy that, it's also over here if, if you wanna look at that. And we're gonna go back and we're gonna go over to our Play, Play Audio 12 on the RTP slash network page. We're going to switch one of our Play Audio 12 options here to Initiator. Since I have nothing else connected, I'm just going to connect it to the first one. We're going to paste in that information from the XM and click Save. And you should see the 
uh, IP port and the name of the port that you're connected to on the XM right here. So that means the connection's made across and now we just need to go into MIDI routing. We can actually check this. We don't have to do anything in here, but uh, if you look in here, if we look at the computer jack one and click on RTP one, it already has a routing to go out to, to this RTP port that we just connected. And if we look at that port, it comes into RTP one on the computer. Um, so that the default routing will work perfectly fine. And that's all we have to do. So there wasn't a lot of changes. There was uh, setting up the MIDI routing for the RSV1 in and out, and then making the connection, the RTP connection between the two devices. Uh, the Play i 12 already had everything set up. So that's all we have to do. So we can actually test this right now. So I'm open up a program called MIDIOX. If you're on Windows, this is uh, a great little software. And let me go to MIDIOX here. So I've selected uh, RTP1 from the Play Audio 12 inside this software. You're gonna see some data coming up here, but that's because Oracle X is keeping connection status with my Play Audio 12. Uh, if I close that out, we should stop that. So I'm gonna clear both monitors here. And now if we look over at our lemur template and I touch a button, now on the computer, we'll, I'll switch you to a computer view here and you can see that I'm getting this data. So how does that control my setup? How does this benefit me? Well, let's go over to a DAW. So I'm gonna use Ableton Live. Uh, we're using Live 10 Suite, but this works for really any DAW uh, that'll let you MIDI map inside of it. Um, so I'm gonna go to the preferences, uh, which is control comma, on Windows, it's command comma on Mac. And all we need to do is enable a few options. So the main thing we need to enable is remote um, inside Ableton. If you don't know this, remote controls things like uh, kind of moving through the session, uh, transport controls, that kind of thing. Whereas track is the individual track options. Um, so we just need to make sure that we have our RTP port enabled. Uh, sorry, I have a lot of devices connected as you've probably seen. So we're gonna make sure we have track RTP1 enabled right here. And then we're gonna go down to the output and do the same thing, RTP1 right here. You can do track and remote, sync if you need uh, clock, that kind of thing. So that's done. Let me go to MIDI and I'm gonna click on the play button. I'm gonna click the play button in Lemur and you can see that mapped. CC121, the exact one that we mapped in Lemur. We're gonna click on the stop button, click the stop button in Lemur, and we got CC122. So now this is mapped. So if we were you know, running a session, we can hit our play button, and you can see our playback goes, and we can hit our stop button, and that stopped as well. So that's the whole setup. Um, there's not much else to go through. It's a pretty, actually a pretty simple setup once you figure out the physical connections and we make those RTP connections. So it's not a lot of work, but it does take a bit of knowledge to figure out how to connect things. If you have any questions about this, uh, feel free to contact us and uh, we'll try and get back to you as quick as possible. Have a great day.